What I've got here is the Rinsworld Air War Campaign Book. This is the first supplement for Aeronautica Imperialis. Uh, you've got colour plates in it, you've got a nice hardback book, you've got a ribbon bookmark, you've got a nice colour cover and colour back piece. So, in it you've got introduction, very much like the introduction in the start set, you've got 31 pages of rules. A lot of these are the same as the quick play rules in the start set. There are some important differences. It talks about take backs and changing your mind. It talks about ground defences. Uh, you can purchase these as part of the force. Uh, it talks about ground objectives a little bit. Uh, it gives a different example plane uh, where it talks about the squadron list and the stats. It gives you a Marauder Destroyer. Turn summary, that's all the same. Uh, movement is all the same. Uh, altitude is all the same. Um, you've got designer's notes that are added. So it talks about how you might actually wish to stall or spin in order to get that extra minus one to be hit. It talks about altitude and what it represents and says basically it's up to you. It gives you some additional special manoeuvres, so landing, taxiing and taking off. So you can start with aircraft on the ground. You can land aircraft in order to off offload troops. Firing. This is all the same, but it talks about directly overhead. So when you're directly overhead a ground target, they're in your rear arc. Um, but you are still in their 360 degree fire arc. Uh, talks about rolling to hit, that's exactly the same. Talks about tailing, uh, weapon special rules, extra damage, tail gunner, ground attack, aerial attack are the same. But it talks about effective altitude. This comes up with ground weapons. Ground weapons have an effective altitude. Uh, that's where they can generally fire. If they're firing at something higher, then it's at a minus. So if they're effective altitude two, so things like flat guns and hydras, and you're at altitude three, they hit you on sixes. If you're at altitude four, they can't hit you at all. But then it talks about autonomous weapons. So the only autonomous weapons in the game at this point are grot bombs. Grot bombs, the grot bomber comes with two. You can spend eight points to get an extra two, but they are something that you launch. In the firing phase you can fire a maximum of two autonomous weapons in a single phase. They go out like that, so the front 120 degree arc, and then they go in a straight line six hexes. If they finish next to an enemy aircraft, roll a two up, you've hit them, and then you roll to damage. So grot bombs are damage on two plus, extra damage on four plus which is really nasty. But if they don't hit anything, they go forward another D3 plus three hexes at the end of each movement phase. So you don't activate them as part of initiative, they just move at the end of the movement phase. And they can keep going. If they hit the edge, they're removed from play, but what you can do is you can use them to disrupt an enemy formation. So if you fire a grot bomb at longer range at them and they know that it's gonna pass through their formation next turn, that can split their formation up. It lets you do some interesting things. They are nasty, but and a grot bomber with four grot bombs is 36 points, which is a big investment in points, but it lets orc players do an awful lot. And you might get autonomous weapons from other factions, it's just not in the core rules. You've then got two different types of ground attacks. Strafing run, so fighter at altitude one does a strafing run on a ground target, you hit it on a five up. There's nothing to say it needs to be at range zero, there's nothing to say it needs to be at any specific range, um, and your fighter weapons could be up to long range. So you could be doing it with las cannons off a thunderbolt at range 10. Bombing run 
all the bombs in the game are short range, so you've got to be within four hexes. And the higher you are, the less likely you are to hit. If you're at altitude one, you hit on four plus, not five plus. If you're at altitude two, it's five plus. Altitude three, it's six plus. Uh, altitude four, so they're at zero, you're at four, then you can't hit them. You've gone too high. Bomb creep, if you get a successful hit, you can roll to hit things around your target. So if you've got a bunker and you've got an emplacement in a hex next to it, you hit the bunker on a four up, you hit the emplacement as well. And damage is worked out as normal. Ground to air fire. You've got an effective altitude on your ground to air weapons. If the target is above that, it's minus one per level above that. End phase is the same, talks about recovering from stalls and spins, talks about putting down tailing markers, and then the ending the game section is again the same, uh, talks about fuel limits, talks about point difference, talks about last aircraft standing, and then you get into the background for the, the war for Rin's world. So Rin's world has been part of the background since Rogue Trader. Um, I certainly remember it from the battle at the farm which was the example scenario in the 40k rulebook. So this goes back to that. Um, you've got the chapter master of the Crimson Fists turning up, um, I imagine, after the battle at the farm, but you've also got the start of some nice colour plates. So, Orc Poster, Marauder Destroyer, And a nice map of the action showing the orcs spreading out across Rin's world. This is all key battles, it gives you ideas for scenarios, it gives you the background of the conflict, um, you've got the reconquest of Rin's world when the relief force gets there, colour plate for Dacker jets, um, planetary survey for Rin's world, talking about how the planet is, and also that the reconquest doesn't end the orc threat. That there's still millions of orcs running around Rin's world on every continent because they've not got rid of all the orcs and that includes uh, the orc air force. And then you get into scenarios. So if you've read the original aeronautical rulebook this is going to be somewhat familiar. You've got the dogfight scenario from the quick play rules. Uh, it talks about landing zones in the ground assets set you've got a landing zone marker that you put in the landing zone hex you've also got a bunch of number counters which can be used for scenarios but the dogfight's exactly the same it's a good standard game where you beat up your opponent uh, you've got underdog rule if you're five points cheaper than your opponent or more you've automatically got initiative first turn but then you've got the historical scenarios. So these are a generic scenario, and then you've got the historical scenario underneath with a special rule. And that goes for all of them. So bandits over the river is a dogfight. Um, you've got one player the attacker, one player the defender. Attacker automatically gets initiative for the first turn. But the attacker's aircraft all need to be traveling at maximum speed and you can only use scout and fighter aircraft. You've got the straggler where you've got a defender bomber heading back to base that can only go at speed two. Optional rule, low fuel, means that your Navy pilots might have to disengage. Yeah, and again, that's from the original aeronautical rulebook. Search and rescue, you've got to land something with a transport characteristic. There are only one Imperial plane and two Orc planes with transport characteristics. The Marauder Destroyer, the Heavy Bomber and the Grot Bomber. Which means you've got to take, in the three scenarios where you need transports, those aircraft. So, when eventually Valkyries come out for the Imperium, uh, it's going to get a lot easier. Because I imagine Valkyries will be substantially cheaper than a Marauder Destroyer. And they'll be able to hover 
whereas you've got to land these things. So again, you've got optional rules. Yep, uh, you've got to place six numbered ground target markers within the area of engagement, can't be within three hexes of each other. Defender secretly writes down the number of, which has got the downed crew, uh, and it'll be revealed when observed by an attacking aircraft. To observe, you've got to be with, end your movement within three hexes. Once the location is discovered, replace it with a landing zone marker and remove everything else. Area within three hexes of this marker is the landing zone. The attacker must may now attempt to land and recover the downed crew. So that's going to be a tough scenario for the attacker. Uh, but you can take ground defences as well, and you've got heavy smoke. So some of these are pretty tough scenarios. This one's got night fighting and bad weather in effect if both players agree. Yeah, two landing zone markers that you've got to land at. Troop landing. Two landing zone markers you've got to land at. Uh, bombing mission. Three ground targets with structure four. So that's three bunkers or something else. Because so orcs will take over an imperial structure, you can just go with two orcs and one imperial bunker. But you could use numbered markers, of which you've got 12 in the uh, ground assets set. But yeah, a bombing mission where you've got to take some bombers. Well, you don't have to. You've got to take some things with ground attack ability. You can still strafe, um, but you've got three ground targets with structure four. So you probably want to take some bombs. You can just take fighter bombers either by tooling up Thunderbolts or tooling up fighter bombers or Dacker Jets uh, but you probably want to just take a big bomber that can do the job so those are the scenarios they're going to be quite familiar to people who've played Aeronautica 1st edition uh, campaign play so you've got pilots becoming aces and the abilities that they can generate nice cover plate of an Imperial pilot and then you get into squadron lists so you've got some special rules here rocket boosters means you can disengage from anywhere transport aircraft talks about having a transport characteristic and jump troops so you can parachute things out but that's not particularly advisable because um, if you're at altitude 1 travelling at speed 2 um, as you've got to be to land your troops safely you've got to roll 4 plus if you're altitude 2 it's 5 or 6 um, if you're a hovering aircraft at altitude 1 you only fail on a 1 so again things like Valkyries but Valkyries aren't in the game yet so Imperial Navy you've got the same upgrades available as you do in the quick play rules so armoured cockpit infrared targeting flares and chaff, ejector seats and ace pilot. Um, you've got Thunderbolt Fighter at 21 points, 3 structure, 2 throttle, max speed 6, max altitude 5, quad auto cannon, twin last cannon. You can engage at every range bracket. It's probably best for you to engage at medium range when you've got 2 last cannon dice and 6 auto cannon dice. Auto cannons are better than DACA guns, they do damage on 4+. plus. Last cannons are much better damaging on 2+, plus, doing extra damage on 6+. Plus. Um, I've lost a Dacker Jet to a lucky last cannon shot that hit me at long range and then rolled 6 on damage, so that's Dacker Jet explodes. You can take 2 Ordnance and you can choose. Uh, Thunderbolt Fury is 2 points more expensive but gets plus 1 dice at short and medium range for the Avenger Bolt Cannon and that then gains extra damage 6 plus. So that is, I think, absolutely worth two points. You get one extra dice at short, one extra dice at medium, and if you roll a six to damage, and you've got to get four, five, or six anyway, then you're doing two damage points. That's worth remembering. Uh, let's have a look. Is anything else different? No, everything else is exactly the same. You've got a nice colour plate for the Thunderbolt, Marauder Bomber, 23 points again, 
um, comes with three lots of bombs doing eight dice short range uh, damage on two plus extra damage five plus that is great for nailing ground targets Hellstrike missiles you can take up to four ordnance Hellstrike, sky strike or wing bombs um, it's a marauder so you don't want to take sky strike because it's not a dogfighter but Hellstrike versus wing bombs Hellstrike can hit at long range they damage three plus ground attack extra damage six plus if you're attacking a ground target you can attack it from quite some way away wing bombs it's got to be short range 2 plus to damage, extra damage 5 plus. So it's more damaging, but you've got to get closer. Depending on how your opponents prep the battlefield, they might have ground assets, anti aircraft guns that you've got to get past if you want to get in short range of whatever the ground target is. And you've got a lovely colour plate of a Marauder. Marauder Destroyer 27, you've got some really handy stuff for strafing if you strafe something from being over it tail gunner aerial attack no okay that makes it seem like you can only hit aerial targets with it which does contradict the fluff a little bit because it used to be auto cannon it dive in and then assault cannon it on the way back up but that might be a balanced thing and that's certainly not an issue uh, you roll half the dice for Bombay than you do compared to the Marauders. The Marauders got twice the bomb load. You've still got four hard points on the wings, so you could take seven lots of four dice of bombs. You could take four Sky Strike, four Hell Strike missiles. I think if you're taking this in a ground attack roll, taking Hell Strikes and strafing at medium range where you're rolling two dice for hell strikes and nine dice for auto cannon is the way to go so this can get pricey if you tool it up with maximum ordnance it's 35 points but it's a little bit faster than a marauder no it's not it's exactly the same with worse handling so if you stall or you spin you're going to find it harder to come out of it but it's still structure 5 and you've gained transport 1. So in three of the scenarios in this campaign book, you need to take Marauder Destroyers. Because Valkyries aren't out yet, and it's the only thing you've got that can land troops. Ground defences, Hydra Flat Cannons, um, two structure points, 642. So get better as you get closer. Effective altitude, 2. So you're hitting something at altitude 3 on 6 plus and you can't hit something on altitude 4 Manticore missile battery effective altitude 5 so you can hit anything on a 5 plus ground to air fire doing extra damage on 5 plus so it's 2 dice short range, 1 dice medium, 1 dice long, 4 up damage but if you get a 5 or a 6 that's 2 points so I can see that shooting down a lot of Jacker jets but it's a pretty nice 7 point ground battery Aces, you've got two aces, one Thunderbolt, one Marauder. Thunderbolt ace, once per game when targeting an enemy aircraft at a lower level of altitude than you, uh, you add plus one to your firepower dice when rolling to hit. So normally it's minus one for every level of altitude different. Uh, in this case you'd ignore that. So let's just double check firing. Because I want to be absolutely certain so yeah minus one per level of altitude difference so even if you're above them it's still minus one but he's got one point of speed more than a standard thunderbolt so for two points he goes one point of speed faster and he's got this rule he can use once per game, which is situational. I think the extra point of speed just does nip you towards thinking this is worth taking. Blue Devil Marauder. When an aircraft makes a bombing run, you can re-roll any roll of one when rolling to hit with wing bombs. So you've got to pay for wing bombs, 
and you're paying three points for him to have this ability. Uh, handling's better, so he can get out of stalls better. Uh, but let's just double check speed. Speed's the same. Yeah, it's handling that's one point better. If you're doing a ground attack mission like a bombing run, it's three points, unless you reroll ones on the wing bombs. And if you take four sets of wing bombs, that's real useful. Right, Orc Air War. You've got the best upgrade in the game, I think. The big shooters. You get this additional primary weapon. Custom big shooters, two dice, two dice, zero dice, five up, unlimited ammo. So they've changed the wording compared to the quick play rules. It has exactly the same effect, basically. It's a three point upgrade, so I think that's a bit pricey for a DACA jet, because DACA jets can get one shotted and do get one shotted, and I've lost one to getting one shotted. It happens. Um, upgrades, same as in the core rules. Extra armor's useful, um, extra speed is useful, ace ability, uh, just to re-roll a dice roll, but it's the whole roll. So if you're rolling 10 dice on your deck, on your big shooters and you get no hits, you can re-roll the whole thing. If you roll three dice on your rockets, you get two hits and you try and re-roll to get three, you've got to re-roll all, th all three dice. So basically, it's situational and you'll see exactly when you do it. So for Orc players, rockets are exactly the same as missiles, except they're much better at short range. So 3, 2, 1, 3 plus damage, but no extra damage. So fighter bombers. Um, I think these are a good take for the standard Orc fighters. They've got a point more structure. Um, they have one less ace manoeuvre, one less point of speed, uh, but they've also got one less minimum speed. You've got quad big shooters on the front, you've got turret big shooters on the right, left, up and rear, and you've got a tail gun as well. For four points, I think they're absolutely worth it. You can take three, point, three sets of ordnance, or switch that three ordnance for two pairs of big bombs, and big bombs are slightly better orc bombs. Six dice, two plus damage, extra damage four plus. Whereas wing bombs are four, two and five plus extra damage. So statistically three versus two, you've got the same number of dice but you do extra damage one point better. However, you are paying two points for that. But it's also more attacks in one go. Heavy bomber. Pictures of this leaked out online uh, because GW accidentally put the box cover for this up for the fighter bomber as part of the pre-order. That's been spoiled and now they've done a community, art community article on it showing it next to a fighter bomber and it's a chubby little plane. But it's got enormous amounts of firepower at the sides. You've got a nose turret. 4 2 dice, a dorsal turret, 3 2 dice, so same as a heavy bolter turret, but you've got port and starboard big shooters, 6 3. And then you've got one lot of bombs that you can kick out the back. You can then get three sets of ordnance, wing bombs, big bombs, rockets. So it's not really vulnerable from the front not really vulnerable from the side. So if something attacks you from the side, then you can throw nine dice at it at short range and five at long. If it attacks you from the front, seven and four. If it attacks you from the rear, from the same or higher level, you can still fire two dice from the dorsal turret. But if something attacks you from the rear and the bottom, then there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can throw back and the side big shooters can't target things that are above them. So the fire arcs on planes are actually going to be quite important for formation flying. Grot bomber, so you've got autonomous grot bombs. 
fire arc front left side front right side front so the front 180 degrees you can fire these things it comes with two you can buy two more for eight points that does take this to 36 points however it's got quad big shooters at the front and port and starboard turrets it's still got six structure and it's got three transport so compared to the heavy bomber which has got two transport if you've got a transport scenario you might end up taking some grot bombers because they're real useful but for ground attack it's going to be heavy bombers every time with wing bombs or with big bombs I can see this becoming a cult favorite for orcs it's real nice and then orc defense platforms are as you'd expect uh, you've got a flak, flak platform, effective altitude 2, 8, 4, 2 dice. Heavy flak cannon, 2, 2, 1 dice, damage 4 up, extra damage 6 up. Effective altitude 4, so it can hit anything. Um, it's just, if it's altitude 5, you're only hitting on 6s. Aces, Black Baron. Uh, the Black Baron is a Daka jet that costs 7 more points. Why does it cost 7 more points? It's got one point better handling. It's got quad big shooters, so it can take the additional big shooters. But you re-roll any roll of one when you're rolling to hit. So when you're rolling eight dice, or if you give it the upgrade of additional shooters, ten dice, you're going to get a one or two, which you can then re-roll. So you're going to get more hits. And you can use this every turn. It's not a once per game. It's every turn, which is why this costs seven more points. The only other advantage it's got is an extra point of handling, which is situational, but that's the Black Baron. Toothcracker is an Orc bomber uh, on Big Burner, which is a fighter bomber. Uh, standard fighter bomber loadout. So you can you've still got to buy wing bombs, but he costs two points more. Once per game on a bombing run, add plus one modifier to each firepower dice when rolling to hit. So you do it, you give him some bombs, and he's there to try and take out ground targets. Uh, what else has he got? I think everything else is exactly the same. And then you're onto the reference sheets that you can photocopy, uh, the movement diagram, ditto, and the counters. So, is this supplement worth it? I would say if you want to play Aeronautica, you've played the start set for a little bit, you want to expand the game, it is. Um, if you played Aeronautica 1st edition, you want to get into 2nd edition, and you've already got tables and planes, it is. If you don't want to get the start set because you only want to get one faction, you can get this, get a map, get a box or two of planes, get a pack of counters and away. It does tie into the ground assets box. It is worth getting the ground assets box if you're getting this. But I like it. It's the specialist games combination of quality hardback books, solid rules and plastic releases. So I'm very much looking forward to whatever book they do next. So hopefully in two or three months time we get Imperium versus Chaos, we get Valkyries, we get Chaos Planes, something like that. Because the game does need more than two factions. You've got four planes per faction at the moment, and while you've got the potential to meet every role in what you've got, Imperials do need Valkyries, or some sort of dedicated transport. Uh, orcs could do with a Chin Orc for a dedicated transport. They've got fighters covered, they've got bombers covered, those key roles are done. You might give them uh, death copters. Death copters make a great little scout thing. Give them death copters and chin orcs in a set to give them transport and to give them scouts. Give Imperials, Valkyries, Stroke Vendettas um, in one set so that they've got transport and some more ground attack. It's a good game. I've played some games of it. Um, if you've played X-Wing, if you've played Wings of War, if you've played Aeronautica 1st Edition, 
then it is very much a cleaned up, easier to play version of those rules. I've read this, I like it, I've played some games, I've painted up my start set, next it's the ground assets and Marauder Bomber, Marauder Destroyers. Uh, I look forward to expanding the game and playing some bigger games. So I've played 50 point dogfights to get a feel for it. And the start set will give you a good feel for it. But then you want to be playing on bigger maps. So the Rins World map is 3x3. Three three. I recommend you actually see if you can go 4x4 four four or 6x4. Or put two 3x3s three threes together to get a 6x3. Because doing that. Imperials get better. Imperials are a medium to long range force. They want to engage at long and medium range. Orcs want to get into knife fighting range. Orcs go faster, they've got less maneuvers, but you don't really see that on a small two and a half foot by two and a half foot map. You want a bigger map where speed and maneuvers and longer range weapons count more and where you can use formations and strategy. It's much harder to use formations when you start off almost at knife fighting range. Uh, certainly I think the scenarios add a lot. I'd much prefer if there were a couple of bombing scenarios and a couple of transport scenarios instead of three transport and one bombing. I do like how they've updated the scenarios from Aeronautica, but I do wish they'd done more than six. So. If they'd done, say, a balanced competitive scenario for matched play, I'd have liked to have seen that. Uh, once a couple more factions are out, I think there is potential to do this as a competitive game. Um, Orcs vs Imperials is quite balanced, and I've won two with Orcs and lost one with Orcs in previous games. Um, but I'd like to see more factions out for it. So that's all to come, and I very much look forward to seeing it. But my recommendation for this is if you are serious about Aeronautica, pick it up. So if you've liked this video, hit like and subscribe. If you want to chat, leave a comment below. But otherwise, good gaming.